The SportEye ColorWise True Color Sensor is the most feature-packed color sensor available today. The ColorWise offers superior detection, advanced features and versatility, yet remains easy to use. In this short video, we will take a look at practical examples of sensors set up using the ColorWise digital channels. It is assumed the viewer has watched the previous videos describing the ColorWise options and how to set them. Let's start with a simple application, like sorting four colored bottle caps. All channels on this unit are set to the default settings. Let's review those settings now. Tolerance is 10. Mode is color. Output mode is light on or match. And timers are off. Let's check and review the system menu settings as well. Light intensity is set to a full 100. Speed and resolution. Unless you need the speed, always change the default setting of high speed to high resolution for best detection. Now that we know where we're starting from, let's check our targets using the signal strength light meter. When setting up, be sure the distance to your targets is appropriate for the stated range of your sensor unit. It is best to angle the sensor's light beam at approximately 10 to 15 degrees from perpendicular to the surface to avoid glare off the target's surface finish. Glare will distort the spectrum of the light returned to the sensor, making it difficult to get an accurate read of the target's color. Place each target in view and verify you get a reading, as high as possible, between 0 and 100, on all targets. Adjust the sensor's physical positioning, if necessary, to achieve this. If you are receiving too much light back and can't back the sensor away from the target, you can adjust the light intensity setting in the system menu. Once you capture each color, the sensor will exit out of the menu system. This makes it easier to capture all four colors quickly. Now that we have all four colors captured, we can quickly test. All colors recognized and no false positives on other channels. In many applications, the default settings out of the box are not ideal, and adjusting other options may be needed. The most common option adjusted will be the tolerance option. Again, starting with the default channel settings and high-res mode, let's capture each color of this paint chip. Notice that the dark yellow color on channel 1 works fine, and no other channel falls triggers. But when we put color 2 or 3 in view, channel 2 and channel 3 false trigger on each other. Notice also, with color 2 in view, the number of bars on the channel 3 bar graph do not go all the way to the top, indicating that we can solve this problem by tightening the tolerance on channel 3 so that it does not false trigger on color 2. Since the bars on channel 3 go more than halfway up the graph, reducing the tolerance from 10 to about 3 or 4 is a good place to start.
The same is true for color 3. Channel 2 falls triggers in exactly the same way. Let's adjust the channel 2 tolerance to 3 as well. Now we see that all three channels give a very stable output only on the correct target color, with no false triggers. Note that lowering the tolerance allows greater ability to differentiate one color from another, but can decrease the stability of the output signal, depending on the geometry, surface finish, and texture of the target object. In setting the tolerance, you are striking a balance between differentiation and stability. Sometimes colors can be so close together that you will need to switch from color to color and intensity mode. As a general rule, always try color mode first, as it provides the greatest stability. In color and intensity mode, the sensor is much more sensitive to changes in target position, angle of incidence, and movement. Targets must be presented to the sensor more precisely to achieve a stable output. Here we have two electrical sockets that are very close in color. Starting from the default settings and high res mode, both have been captured on a channel, as labeled here. Notice that when either target is presented, that both channel 1 and channel 2 trigger and show full bar graphs. In this case, we cannot tighten or lower the tolerance to differentiate. We need to switch to color and intensity mode. Note it is not necessary to do a new capture. Color and intensity mode changes the way the ColorWise interprets the captured data it already has. In this case, we see that we can now differentiate between the two targets, and no further adjustment is required. In many cases, the tolerance settings may need to be adjusted after switching to CI mode. Timers can often be helpful in creating a stable output signal for unusual targets. This cap's color, for example, has been captured on channel 1. Watch as it passes under the sensor and you will see that we get multiple outputs. This is due to the shiny surface and geometry of the cap. The raised edges of the cap cause a flash of glare that distorts the spectrum received by the sensor, causing the signal to be out of tolerance. We can overcome this using a simple off delay to hold the output on as the features of the cap pass by. In this case, I'm going to add about 300 milliseconds of off delay. Now as the cap passes by, we get one stable output. Here are a few examples of applications using the ColorWise True Color Sensor. When sampling cylindrical objects, best results can often be achieved by pointing the sensor radially inward and angling the beam in the direction of the cylinder's center line. The ColorWise can be used to detect colored film or liquids when a reflective background is placed behind them. This could be an actual reflector, reflective tape, or even bright white paper. When looking at materials with multiple colors or texture, such as fabric, a large spot size provides better averaging over the sampled surface and more stable detection. Use the ColorWise Remote Capture feature to build fast setup and quick changeover into your systems.
use the latching feature to detect that all parts are present in a set or package. Label inspection on boxes or bottles. Set up on the background color. If the color changes, a label has been applied. Splice detection. Set up on the material color and look for a change to detect any color splice tape. Registration to detect any color mark on another color background. Detect the presence of a plastic liner inside a box. Automotive error proofing to be sure that all the parts in an assembly are the same color and match correctly. Sortation and inspection on all kinds of materials. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. For additional questions or information, please contact Tritronics at 1 800 237 0946 or visit our website at ttco.com.